Italy v England, we're not just in the final, we can bloody win it. England are in the Euro 2020 final. Crazy. And we stand a bloody good chance of winning the damn thing. What do we do? How do we act? What are the pre-game rituals, the emotions we're supposed to suppress or let flourish? These are uncharted waters as an England supporter, and while there is something dizzying about the whole experience there is also something oddly, calm. The feeling isn't pandemonium or tortuous nerves, although the latter, I'm sure, will come, but rather a sense of floating cautiously above it, a sense of serenity earned but not trusted, imposter syndrome laced with a paranoid suspicion that we're not actually imposters at all. That is not to suggest arrogance, far from it. Italy are a very strong side and have been better than England throughout the tournament. But the absence of dread speaks to how different this team is to all previous iterations and how, no matter the outcome on Sunday, Gareth Southgate has changed the England men's team. Three minutes before Raheem Sterling won the penalty against Denmark, something strange happened to me. After two hours of shredded nerves, clenched jaw and aching fear, I was suddenly overcome by complete tranquility. It was not so much an out-of-body experience as a truly in-body experience. Neo at the end of the Matrix. A perfect clarity of knowledge. Oh. England are going to win. It was in that zen state from the back row of Wembley that I watched Sterling go down, knowing the penalty would be given, then watched Harry Kane, knowing he would miss and knowing it wouldn't matter. It is entirely plausible that in the giddy, synapse melting cauldron of the evening's events my memory has embellished and rewritten the lucidity of that vision, but I've relayed it here because of what it says about how Southgate has rewritten the experience of supporting England. A sense of calm, of control, has been there throughout the six matches, even if some supporters have taken longer to appreciate the insignificance of entertainment in the group stages. And by the 100th minute of the semi-final it suddenly felt like there was nothing to fear, that victory wasn't just possible but inevitable. And England supporters need not fear Italy on Sunday, despite the huge challenge Roberto Mancini's side pose. This will most likely be a tense, low-scoring affair in which Italy hold the vast majority of possession, such as their dominance in midfield, while England look for opportunities to break down the flanks. Fortunately for England, Southgate's tactical blueprint for beating Denmark on Wednesday seems just the right system to confound Italy. There will be some calls for a return to the 3-4-3 formation used against Germany, and indeed before the tournament began Southgate probably anticipated using it whenever England faced one of the big teams, but the 4-2-3-1 ultimately makes more sense. First, it means England are less likely to be overrun in midfield. Marco Verratti and Nicolo Barella is considerably stronger than England's potential lineup, and it is reportedly understood within the England camp that midfield is Southgate's weakest area. Declan Rice and Calvin Phillips will need plenty of support against those three, making a two-man midfield in a 3-4-3 a mistake. A 4-2-3-1 would put Mason Mount in the position to drop deeper onto Jorginho as Verratti and Barella push forward to occupy Rice and Phillips. England, as usual, won't press particularly high and will show plenty of conservatism, allowing Italy to dominate the ball for long periods. Again, the Denmark system should work. England pressed in a surprising pattern, leaving the wing backs open by blocking the pass into the center, a style that will help prevent the Italy midfield from gaining too much momentum. In terms of team selection, Southgate will probably stick with the same 11 that started against Denmark, mainly because the versatile Bukeo Saka can perform a dual role from the right. Comfortable dropping into a wing back space as Kyle Walker makes a back three, England can swing neatly into a 3 5 2 when under pressure which is exactly the right shape to face Italy's on-the-ball 2-3-5 formation. As a mirror image, England can go man-to-man. -man. In terms of how England can break down Italy, Southgate will again be focusing on funneling attacks down the flanks. Only four nations at Euro 2020 built down the wings with more frequency than England's 77% per woe scored, and while that is partly a reflection of Phillips and Rice being unable to play clever line-breaking passes it is also a deliberate strategy. England like to dribble directly at the opponent and have even developed an archetypal goal this summer, cutting the ball back from the byline. All 10 of their goals have been scored within 12 yards. England's wing-focused attack ought to be particularly effective down Italy's left. Leonardo Spinazzola's injury has badly disrupted Italy because his replacement Emerson is significantly weaker in attack and defense. Saka should find joy counter-attacking in the space left behind him, Emerson is expected to make up the front five, while right-back Giovanni Di Lorenzo forms a back three, although England might do even better here in the latter stages, should Jack Grealish come on and Sterling switch to the right. 
However, aside from Italy's advantage in central midfield Mancini, will also be hoping to create chances through Federico Chiesa who, along with Ciro Immobile running in behind, will look to get beyond the advancing Luke Shaw and hurt Harry Maguire. England's centre-back is vulnerable to pace, particularly after a turnover, further highlighting the need to get tight to Jorginho before he can spray a pass out to the right flank. It will be a close game, that's for sure, and on the surface England have plenty to fear. But that's just not the dominant emotion either within the camp or among supporters. England have a self-esteem and a courage that has become infectious and that is capable, even, of providing moments of total stillness, the chance to look up and drink it all in. Bet Builder, back England to lift the trophy, and under 2.5 goals at 2.5 odds correct at the time of publication. 18 plus please gamble responsibly. Visit begambliaware.org.